All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to another Black Ops 3 tutorial video. And today's video is going to be a little guide on how to do the trophy slash achievement time attack. Time attack is quite a difficult trophy slash achievement, and uh, it's featured on the map Grog Crowley, which is the third map, if you didn't know, in the season of uh, Black Ops 3. Anyway, the whole point of this whole entire uh, trophy slash achievement is that you need to get to round 20 by 32 minutes. Now, <laughs> that might not sound too difficult, but on this map, and uh, considering how hectic this map can be, as well as like, you've got to bear in mind, you've got the manglers, you've got the dragons breathing fire on the map, you've also got the uh, tasing droid thingies, the Valkyrie drones, that's their names, um, and stuff like that. You've got like everything that can uh, cause a lot of problems on this map. Um, so, it can be quite challenging and it can really screw you over if you're not careful. <laughs> but anyway, so my recommendation, as you can see in this game, I'm doing it with two players. I would recommend doing it with two people. However, you could do it with, you know, four or you could do it on your own. Um, it would be a lot harder on your own. So I recommend you do it with somebody else at least. Uh, but it is possible on your own. So don't feel like you have to do it um, with others. But uh, as you can see, I do it with winch in this game, and the idea is basically I cover one side of the spawn room, he covers the other, and we do this all the way up to round 20. Uh, so I will first of all say that in order to do this, you cannot, and I mean you can't, open the spawn door. If you open that, you basically pretty much failed this. You can still do it, but God. It won't be easy. The biggest problem with if you open that spawn room door is you've just created a load of uh, new spawns for the zombies. And that in turn has just caused a lot more problems. You want to kill as many zombies in each wave as quickly as possible. And if you open that starting room door then you're just delaying it. And bear in mind this is a time thing so you really need to uh, actually be going through the waves very quickly. So, yeah, preferably don't open the spawn door. I mean, you can if you wish, but I, I wouldn't if I were you. It would be really difficult if you did. Um, so what we did for this strategy is we left the spawn door shut until the end of round 20, so basically 21. Uh, and then we opened the door and went and picked up the sword, which you will see at the end of this uh, gameplay. Um, on the wall, which is what you get as a reward after completing this. I'd like to say that you also do get three other uh, melee weapons. I actually can't remember what they are, but you do get them after uh, each five waves. So once you get to the fifth wave, uh, sorry, the sixth wave even, um, after getting to the sixth wave in a certain amount of time, you will get a like melee weapon on this little board um, down inside the sewer area where you normally build the dragon shield and what you can do then is you can go and purchase it for 500 points uh, and then again that would happen on round uh, 11 and then again on round 16 and then finally again on round 21. Um, in this gameplay for the sake of doing this in time and quickly um, we did not actually go and pick up three of the melee weapons, mostly because it's so much easier staying in the spawn room and doing this. Um, we just picked up the sword at the end, but they, you can, obviously, if you wish, go and pick up the other things, but it will make it harder, and uh, I personally don't think it's really worthwhile, but there you go, that's just my opinion. You can if you wish. Um, what you will notice is every time you do get to a specific round so in this case there's an example here round six after doing five of those rounds uh, in a certain amount of time you will notice that you get a little message pop up on the screen which is called time attack it will tell you that you've done the challenge of getting to that specific round in that amount of time and uh, you get some XP rewards for it, as well as, of course, you get the melee weapon and stuff like that. Uh, but these are great indicators. They will tell you exactly whether you've done the challenge uh, or not, and you should keep an eye for those at all times. If you do not get one of those pop-ups on uh, round 6, um, round 11, 
Clive to do my maths here. Round six, round eleven, round sixteen, and round twenty-one. Then it means that you haven't got to those specific rounds in a certain amount of time that you are meant to get to the map. Bear in mind to get to round twenty-one, you have to get to it within thirty-two minutes. Um, it's you know it's pretty obvious. So there you go. What you can also use as a reference to help you, because obviously you're probably thinking, shit, how do I know when I get to that specific time limit and so on? Uh, like, help me. <laughs> um, if you push the select button on your controller and also tab if you're on a uh, keyboard, in this case, for PC, then um, you will be able to see on the HUD in the top right-hand corner a little timer and this timer basically is a countdown of how long you've been playing the game for. Uh, this is really useful. I did actually use this and uh, so did my teammate a lot as well. And basically it tells you exactly uh, how long you've been going for and how long you've got left. So you can kind of time yourself in regards to getting to round 21 within 32 minutes. <laughs> and yeah, it, it kind of helps. Uh, it's sort of the thing that you really need to keep an eye on so i would really consider it um if i said top right hand corner i meant top left hand corner i apologize for that mistake um but yes anyhow there you go uh keep an eye on that timer it is very very vital right so some other things that i'll give you as hints for this um make sure that you have a good gobble gum set now you could do this without gobble gums yes I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> it would be really difficult and not really worthwhile. Uh, some gobble gums that I'm just going to go through and recommend. You don't have to have them, but you can if you wish. And personally, the ones that I'm going to list first are the ones that you really should take in with you. Uh, and Power Vacuum is the first one I'm going to recommend. The reason I recommend this, uh, obviously most people by now should know Power Vacuum is a really OP gobble gum, um, which gives you like all the power-ups within four rounds. And having this gobble gum is literally the most god-graceful thing for this uh, trophy or achievement you could possibly have. Because every time you kill a zombie, pretty much, you will get a power-up and you get nukes, you get instant kills, and you know, it's just endless. It's so helpful to have. I can't stress that enough. Uh, I definitely recommend that you have power vacuum for this. I honestly do. This is like a must in my opinion, because it will make you go through the round so quickly that it will make this so much easier. So honestly, try and have a power vacuum. If you don't have one, then obviously you can't, but uh, it is a very useful uh, gobble gum to have, and I strongly recommend that you take this in or at least one person does if you're playing with more people uh, the next one I'm going to recommend is a Perkaholic I mean this one should be pretty obvious uh, you don't have to have a Perkaholic of course however you are in the spawn room until round 21 bear in mind that you don't have any power and you can't just run and buy perks unless you open up the map and pretty much screwed up the whole of this uh, challenge that you know it, it doesn't really work so <laughs> taking in a perkaholic is in my opinion pretty important um obviously that gives you extra health it allows you to run if you get in a tight situation quickly you've obviously got the ability to have a uh, faster reload which is really vital electric cherry is brilliant in this situation especially if you're in tight spots again because they electrocute uh, all the zombies and stuns them if you're getting a bit whacked to death or whatever very useful to have i honestly recommend that you have it widow's wine especially is helpful here um so seriously taking a perkaholic it will make your life so much easier um you can take in a raindrops raindrops i actually decided to take in obviously we had power vacuum as well so raindrops wasn't as important however raindrops is very useful it does allow you to spawn in uh, all of these different power-ups uh, so you get one of each power-up and uh, you have two activations of that which is pretty useful so you can use it once during a round and then once the next round or you could use both of them in the round doesn't really matter uh, the reason I'm saying that is because it gives you an instant kill and again it gives you a nuke so you know they're pretty uh, pretty useful things to have and I, I honestly recommend that you have that 
Uh, right, the next thing I recommend is a definite wall power. Now, I'm going to uh, quickly go over something in regards to the wall power itself. You may have noticed in the video that I use wall power on the Shiva. And you're probably thinking, what the bloody hell are you doing? Why are you using it on a Shiva? Why not use it on the... Uh, the RK5, you know, that makes perfect sense. Right, now this is where I have to go over this. If you have finished all the Easter eggs and you've also, you know, completed Revelations Easter egg after doing all those Easter eggs, then you should know that it is actually impossible <laughs> to uh, not have the RK5 at the beginning of every single map because that is one of the rewards as a result of doing all the easter eggs you get the RK5 at the start of every game as well as the normal starting pistol so as a result of this you can't actually trade out the RK5 when you're in the spawn room for anything else uh, well I mean you could trade it out for the Shiva if you really wanted to um, and then you could go and use wall power on that but again it's just delaying the inevitable and also the RK5 helps you go through the rounds a lot faster than a normal pistol does so I really wouldn't recommend doing that <laughs> but you know it's a very useful thing to have the uh, RK5 in general but of course if you have it after doing all those easter eggs you can't use wall power to pack punch it because you already have it <laughs> and as a result it doesn't work you can buy ammo for it yes of course but you can't use wall power um, unless you do what I said before where you trade out one of your other guns uh, like the RK5 for the Shiva on the wall and then get wall power and get that for the RK5 and then if you really want to do it again for the Shiva um, you can do it that way but it is not a good idea. It will delay you in time, which you really don't want during this. So I personally wouldn't recommend it. Um, so if you do have this problem and you have completed all the Easter eggs like me and Winch had here, then you should just use War Power and use it on the Shiva. The Shiva is actually very useful, especially as you know you have a perkaholic and uh, you have double tap with it which does make the Shiva actually pretty damn powerful in this situation it's quite useful to have it uh, also instant kills of course from like power vacuum and stuff help too but yes uh, you should take in a wall power and use it on either the RK5 if you haven't done all these eggs or the Shiva it will make this so much faster and so much easier you have more ammo as a result of this and of course you know you have a more powerful weapon um, you could also take in a couple gun that allows you to have a double punch ability on that gun as well. I mean, we didn't, but you can if you wish. Uh, so you could put on like dead wire or fireworks or something. Um, but, you know, that's up to you if you want that. That's sort of a, if you really want it, a uh, gobble gun, but you don't have to have it. Um, you could take in a cash back if you do not have a power vacuum or anything like that. Because uh, obviously max ammos are pretty vital here unless you buy all the ammo off the wall uh, Which is of course very plausible, but you know if you uh, don't have a power vacuum Then you might want to take in a max ammo gobble gun just to be on the safe side uh, And obviously it means you can have ammo for your weapons and stuff Of course if you have a power vacuum you don't really need a cash back due to the fact that well <laughs> You get max ammo pretty much all the time from the power vacuum uh, And again with raindrops and stuff as well so it's up to you whether you want that or not. Uh, that pretty much covers it for the gobble gums, really. I mean, you can take in a couple of others if you really wish. You could take in uh, Burned Out, actually, is surprisingly kind of useful for this. Uh, again, obviously, it only has two activations, so it's sort of the if you really want it thing. Um, you could take in an aftertaste if you really wanted, uh, if you're like worried about losing your perks or whatever. Uh, if you are playing it on multiplayer, you could take in a near-death experience, so if someone goes down rather than having to revive them, you can just stand next to them and make it quicker. Um, you know, there's, there's a couple of other gobble gums that you can take in, you don't have to have them. The other one that I kind of recommend, but at the same time don't, and I'm going to go over why this is, is uh, Undead Man Walking. Now, Undead Man Walking, as I'm sure everyone knows, uh, makes all the zombies go to a normal sort of speed like they do on round one and that, where they just walk. Um, this is good, however, if you do this, you are going to slow down the time a bit. So, if you do use this gobble gum, you should really... <laughs> 
ideally use it on later on waves uh, and I'm talking about like round 17 or something because you know you have a lot of zombies then so walking wise it's not too bad because obviously they're all inside the map bit anyway they're not outside the barriers so it helps out quite a bit uh, but I, I personally wouldn't recommend that but you can take it in for you know if you really don't like the whole uh, being in the spawn room and there's like a crap ton of zombies sprinting at you thing uh, you know there's there's a couple of things you could do there but it's up to you whether you want to take that in or not I wouldn't but it's up to you uh, yeah but I think that really covers it for the gobble gums um, yeah I kind of went in depth with that because there is a lot to go over with the gobble gums so you know it's useful to have it uh, the other thing I'd say is when you spawn in check your challenges on the gravestone because if you have a challenge where you can get the max ammo straight away from that gravestone that can be very very helpful if you just want to grab a max ammo quickly and you don't for example have a rain drop or a power vacuum or something uh, you could just run over, get your uh, max ammo reward out of the grave, and then boom. Uh, obviously, that's not guaranteed. You'll have a challenge that will allow you to do that uh, at the start. But you might be able to. So, you know, it's, it's worthwhile uh, checking and seeing what you can get from it, if you can get something from it. Usually, if you're playing with four players doing this, there will be at least one person that can do that challenge. Um, not all four, but at least one person should be able to do it. So I would highly recommend checking it out. It is helpful to have. Uh, right, some general things now for this. I want you to all bear in mind a couple of things. First thing, you have no dragon shield, okay? Because you're stuck in the spawn room in my case, the way I'm teaching you to do it. When you're in the spawn room, you don't have the ability to pick up any of the parts of the dragon shield or build it. This means you need to keep an eye on your behind, basically. Uh, keep an eye on your flank for any zombies that could sneak up behind you. I most of the time snuck around in corners, uh, so do winch as well, so that way we kind of knew we weren't going to get snuck up on from behind. Of course, you see me here running down the sewer and that a couple of times, but that's when I feel like it's okay to do so, and uh, I can easily, really quickly turn around and see if there's anyone behind me. Uh, so I don't feel in too much danger. But, you know, be careful of your back. You don't want to get <laughs> you know, killed here because you don't have a dragon shield and it's because you didn't see what was behind you. So my recommendation is stick in the corners as often as you possibly can. Um, I mean, obviously, don't go overboard and always stay in the corner. But, you know, stay in the corner for a reasonable amount of time. It will help you out here. It will make life so much easier. Right, the next thing is, again, in regards to the dragon shield, the dragon itself. So by around, uh, I think it's six or seven, the dragon that normally flies over the spawn and breathes fire on it will start doing that. This can be an absolute pain, and I mean a real pain, for the person who is doing the gravestone side of the... Uh, like window barriers and killing all the zombies over there. The reason this is the pain in the ass for them is the fact that, well, <laughs> a lot of the area where I normally would run, and this is the case with Winch as well when he was doing it, uh, is covered in fire when the dragon comes along. And of course, normally you could get out your dragon shield, you know, put it in front of you and run along and be perfectly fine. However, you don't have that. So as a result, you can't get a dragon shield out to protect you from the fire. You literally are just going to be set on fire. Um, and this is a pain in the ass. <laughs> it's, obviously, if you're doing that side of the map, you need to be kind of careful and keep an eye on your zombies when that dragon comes and make sure you don't get cornered or killed as a result of it. Now, the thing that I can recommend here for that person by that window is if you go underneath the uh, sort of spawn bit where the gobble gun machine is and you stand next to the gobble gun machine itself, you are actually safe. The fire cannot touch you by that gobble gun machine. This is really useful to know because if you have nowhere to run and it's coming really quickly, you can just literally instantly run by that gobble gun machine and stay there until the fire goes away. Of course, you need to bear in mind that there will be fire zombies now you need to be careful of the fire zombies, of course, because 
they're pretty dangerous. <laughs> and uh, if they blow up, obviously you're going to get hurt. Uh, so be careful not to let them get too close to you. But this is a great spot if you're about to have fire breathed on you and you have nowhere to run. Um, the alternative is you could also, you know, run out of that fire and run away quickly. Make sure that there are no zombies in your like in front of you to where you're running or whatever before you do that because you know you'll die otherwise probably you might get away with it but you'll probably die so you need to be careful uh in that regard um that's pretty much it you can if you want and this did actually happen once with winch and me uh is you can have the other person who's doing that side of the map run over to the suicide uh, which is where i was obviously and uh, you can stay over there while the fire is breathing and I don't really recommend that too much on the higher waves because obviously then you've got all the zombies going into one spot and then both players are sort of like oh, 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 or four or whatever um, so do it on the earlier rounds if you're really going to do that but you know it's only if it's a really iffy situation that you really have no choice but to do that that you should do that um, because you don't want to jeopardise the whole entire team as a result of doing that. It's, it's not a good idea. Um, so yeah, do do keep an eye on that. But you know, I I would say stay by the gobble gun machine or by the graves, and you should be perfectly fine when it comes down to the dragon breathing fire on the man. Uh, right now that out of the way, I'm going to talk about Mangalus. <laughs> yes, our old pal the Mangler. Now, again, you don't have the Mangler helmet or anything here, so those Mangler uh, plasma blasts are going to hurt the hell out of you when they hit you, and believe me, they really do. <laughs> and uh, they can cause a lot of issues when it comes down to being in the spawn room. Manglers are unpredictable when doing this challenge. The reason I say they're unpredictable is because they don't just spawn from the same window or whatever, whenever they please. They spawn out of different locations, and sometimes they spawn over spots in the map where the zombies can normally not climb over. Now this can really, really catch you off guard, and you know, you'll be like, oh god, where did he come from? And yeah, you, you really need to be careful for the manglers for that reason, because they really can come from absolutely anywhere on this map in this bit of the spawn room. And it is an absolute killer. <laughs> you don't want that to happen. So seriously? If you see a mangler, blow it up immediately. <laughs> Obviously, you should have a back a punch weapon by the time they come. They normally come around round nine, kind of, sometimes eight. Uh, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Valkyrie drones, of course, again, they'll spawn in and start zapping you and that. Just shoot them, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, with, the mang uh, sorry, with the Valkyrie drones, even, you do get the Valkyrie drone... Uh, like max ammo rounds they'll happen uh, try and blow them up as quickly as you possibly can of course they can delay time quite a fair amount but try and blow them up as quickly as possible uh, this is why you really want a pack a punch weapon in particular for those uh, <laughs> Valkyrie drone rounds with the max ammos because they can like take too long to blow up otherwise and it's not really worthwhile they're wasting all that time really just you know trying to kill a man uh, I keep saying Mangler. Trying to kill a Valkyrie drone is not good. Um, the other thing I'll say for the Valkyrie drone rounds is, of course, you know, the electric zombies can spawn as a result of that, so be careful of them too. Uh, otherwise, I think that really drones down all the main points here. The other point I really want to go over is carpenter power-ups. Now, I know we do an absolutely terrible job in this uh, clip, of what I'm about to say and I do agree that it really was pretty poor but um, <laughs> don't get to the carpenter power-ups the problem with the carpenter power-ups is they delay the amount of time that the zombies can get into the map which in turn delays the amount of time that other zombies will probably spawn in outside the barriers and that's not great <laughs> It also means that a lot of swarms can just pile in out of the windows and you'll be unprepared for it. Um, so, yeah, try not get the carpenters. It will delay your time and it's really not something you want. Of course, we did a terrible job of that in this, like I said, and we ended up running into like billions of carpenters. But, you know, do be careful of it. Try not to do that and uh, you should be all right. 
Uh, otherwise, that's pretty much all I have in regards to most of the tips on this. Um, I can't really think of much else to give you as tips. I think we're pretty much out of tips. <laughs> um, there is a lot of tips there and there's a lot to take in, I know. But if you just keep your eye on what you're doing, you should be just fine and it should work out perfectly. What you should notice here at the end of this clip now, convenient we got to it now, is we completed time attack from the round 20 underneath 32 minutes. And we did it in 25, which is really good. <laughs> uh, once you have finished round 20, spend your money, open up some doors, and follow where I do in this video, which is all the way down to where you normally build the dragon shield. And uh, just before you go into that room, you'll see that board there on the wall, and it should allow you to buy the Fury Song, which is the sword from multiplayer, it's a melee weapon, um, for 500 points. And again, like I said before earlier, you could buy the other weapons if you'd open up the map earlier, but that's up to you. The Fury Song is a one-hit kill. It lasts up to around 40, I believe, as a one-hit kill. And... Uh, yeah, it's, it's useful, but what I will say is you've got to be really careful with this thing because uh, bear in mind all the zombies are literally sprinting at you. This thing is a one-hit kill, but it's a melee weapon um, which only takes out one zombie at a time, so if you get overwhelmed by zombies, you'll probably go down like Winch did there with the sword and uh, that can be quite a devastating blow to you, <laughs> which you don't really want. So you need to be quite careful when you're doing stuff with this sword, uh, so watch yourself with that. But it's a good sword to have as it's a one-hit kill on everything and it's quite useful to have. But there you go. Um, you should also notice when you do that you get the achievement popping up which will obviously show you that you've done it or trophy if you're on the PlayStation as well. Uh, and it's called Timed Attack so yeah, once you see that then you've done it and there you go. Um, what I will also say here, as you would have noticed in this gameplay, I'm obviously playing on the PS4 while doing this, uh, close app. <laughs> I recommend that you close the app just because as a result of using all these gobble gums, you kind of want to keep them, right? Um, so close the app and you'll keep them. Pretend I never told you that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, everyone else does it, so what the hell. <laughs> if you close the app, then it keeps your uh, gobble gums so you never lost them, and that's pretty damn helpful you don't really want to lose so many in my opinion uh, but yeah if you close the app then there you go that's that's that and you should be good to go the other gobble gun which I just noticed here which I didn't mention earlier that you could use which Winch actually used so I never really thought about it is disorderly combat uh, what that is if you don't know is basically it cycles through every weapon uh, on the map within like a certain amount of time and uh, you'll switch to different weapons that you can use in that period of time they're just normal they're not pack a punch or anything uh, this is good but this can also be absolutely horrific because if you get a terrible weapon uh, and it's a higher round then it can really you know be a bit of a problem <laughs> and that's not good I mean Winch got the XM53 at one point when we did this once before and uh, it basically nearly killed us as a result of that. But yeah, you got to be careful with what you get. Um, so be prepared if you take in the disorderly combat for really bad guns at points. Because, you know, that's what will happen. Uh, but yeah, anyhow, that's basically the whole of this uh, achievement slash trophy in a nutshell explained to you. I appreciate this is quite long. So I thank you if you stuck around for the whole entire thing. <laughs> uh, I hope that this was a general you know, really useful, in-depth guys that helped out everyone uh, in any shape or form with doing this trophy slash achievement. Um, if you have any questions or queries about it or you need any help, then uh, don't hesitate to, you know, let me know in the comment section um, by just leaving a comment saying that you need a hand or uh, you didn't quite understand something or whatever. I'll be happy to uh, explain it to you in more depth and answer you as best I can. Um, but yeah, I hope this was useful. This is my first ever actual trophy slash achievement guide. Um, so yeah, I, I hope if this was useful then I might do some more of these uh, for zombies in the future. I mean, I have kind of done others before like Easter egg runs and that, but 
you know this is like a proper trophy one uh, just a trophy but there you go um, so I hope this was useful if it was please leave a like I really appreciate it um, if you have any specific trophies or achievements you want me to go over uh, for zombies then I will have a look into it and try and get it to you uh, as best as I possibly can and uh, yeah if you enjoyed this video and you enjoy my other videos for zombies uh, which you can check out if you want to check them out because this will be inside a guide section so you can look at all the other guides but you can also look at the gameplay sections and that as well they're in playlists that I will leave in the description of the video so you guys can check them out easily um, then yeah if you enjoy all those then feel free to subscribe I really really appreciate it if you do and uh, yeah that's really it to be honest what I will mention is that I have recorded and got a clip for the tutorial that I'm going to do anyway of keep close or keep a close I think it's keep close um, which if you don't know is a trophy achievement for um, revelations which is basically getting the civil uh, civil protector geez, the keeper protector even to go and kill uh, specific zombies stuff all over revelations and you have to get specific uh, enemies killed with the keeper while you shoot at least uh, into them once to damage them a bit um, but yeah so I have got all the clips for that I'm gonna do a guide for that because I know how difficult that can be uh, it can also be quite confusing that was why I also did this one because it can be difficult and confusing um, and I want to help out people in that regard so I will uh, do something for that as well but yeah otherwise I'm going to leave this here so I hope you guys enjoyed this and found it useful but until then I'll see you guys in my next video